Just a quickie today. Ah, the grey Sinclair ZX Spectrum Plus 2. The first of the line built by Amstrad. What? I personally like this almost as much as the 48K rubber key. It has a certain quirky charm with its factory installed components being put in the wrong way round. We'll get to that later. And a built-in tape deck that interferes with the sound. It's not amazingly well made, but one of these would be a good choice as a daily driver spectrum. They just need a little work to fix those faults. This one isn't mine. I do have one, but it's in incredibly bad condition and will be featured in a future episode all by itself. I'm looking forward to that one. Might need to get my tetanus updated. This one is another Paul Universal Retro Boss restoration project. Let's get into it. The obvious thing that's wrong here is this bodged replacement power socket. I actually love this. Someone did this on their kitchen table and brought this faithful computer back to life using nothing but their wit, some salvage parts and a hot poker. And then later they stuck it on eBay and forgot all about it. True love. At the time of recording this opening segment, I didn't have a cable for a 128K Spectrum. Well, I did, but it was for the Plus 2A and Plus 3. I wasn't aware there was a difference and in my ignorance, plugged it in anyway. Yeah, that noise is the result of using the wrong cable. Well, it kind of works. Well, it does in fact work as well as the day it left the factory, which is to say, not very well. You see, there are a few factory features that need to be addressed later on. But first, let's replace that power socket. The inside of the computer, and especially the tape deck, are surprisingly clean. I think whoever owned this before really looked clean. after it. Then their soul turned to ice and they sold it like the heartless monster they'd become. That seems alright. The tape deck will get a service and a new belt a bit later. Closer look at the bodge. It's actually a decent job considering it was probably someone with an unregulated soldering iron and hobby materials. Back then I would have been proud of this work. Not now of course, now I'm a super soldering snob. I have a replacement socket ready to install, so out comes the homebrew not socket. Fingers crossed there's not too much damage to the pads. The front left one has mostly gone on top, but I don't think this will be a problem. That one is connected to the one at the back anyway, so it doesn't really matter too much if one of them is missing. Ah, I see we're trying to fit it sideways. Huh. Nice work there, genius. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, that looks the part. Getting these well aligned is important. If you fit it skewed to one side, it will work just fine. But the power lead will forever be tailing off at an angle and every time you see it, you'll be triggered. So it's a good idea to solder just one connection and make sure to adjust it while you still can.
Nice. Even with that damaged pad, it still has a good amount of solder there to take the strain. Excellent. It still works. It's still farting, but a new cable is in the post. I've connected RF instead. And you have a look up here. It's working. As a sanity check, I connected it to the RF on my TV and tuned it in. The lines on the screen are artifacts from the camera. The picture is actually decent. Just some colour fringing, but nothing terrible. I noticed at this point that my bench power supply was voltage limiting. The expected 9 volts was being drawn down. Fortunately, increasing the current limit just a touch sorted that out. Weirdly, that difference in the input voltage made the tuning shift, which meant I had to retune the TV. Although this seems to be working well, it does have a few problems. First up, there are three transistors that were fitted the wrong way around at the factory. Okay. Here is Lee to point at things and pretend he knows what he's doing. Yeah. We have TR1, TR2, TR3, TR4. Four needs to be changed, turned around. Uh, TR5 needs to be turned around. TR6 and TR7, that needs to be turned around. Uh, four, five and seven. Nice pointing, Lee. If you want a better explanation of what these transistors actually do, head over to Adam Wilson's blog at retrorepairsandrefurbs.com, link in the description. Adam also goes over all the steps of refurbishing a Plus 2 Spectrum in detail. Well worth a read if you're thinking of fixing up one of these. I probably wouldn't recommend removing transistors this way, but it's the way I've become accustomed to and I'm yet to do any damage, so I'll probably stick to it. A big blob of solder across all three legs of the transistor allows you to melt all three at the same time. A pair of pointed tweezers gripping the transistor on the other side and I can gently wiggle it free. These have been installed the wrong way around for many years and that's not the healthiest thing for a transistor to be doing. So while they're out of the board, I give them a quick test with the diode check on my multimeter to make sure nothing terrible has happened. That's good. It's the other way around, so I need to put it that way around. Okay, the, <clears throat> change the three resist, uh, transistors around, so TR, TR5, TR4 and TR7 are all now in the wrong way round. And if I connect up to RF, oh, switched everything off on the bad. That's a bit flickery on there, but that's not bad. Aha! A new cable has magically been posted to me by Ian Pretty at the Retro Computer Shack. If you want to see me gush about how much I love his cables, there's a handy video to let you do just that thing in the description. Oh look, that's gorgeous now. Speaking of the lovely Ian at the Retro Computer Shack, not sponsored, he spotted a Twitter post I made about this grey plus two specky and recommended a modification to possibly improve the RGB picture quality. As I understand it, this will only affect certain LCD TVs and it already seems to work fine with my telly. But this computer will be sold soon by its owner Paul and it would be a great shame if the new owners plugged it in and got a flickery mess on the screen. 
The mod is super simple and Ian has kindly provided instructions for both revisions of the motherboard on his website. Find a link in the description. This computer is an issue three, so I need to remove this link at LK4 and fit a new one at LK2. And then clear the holes at R9 and fit a 470 ohm resistor. It took me more time than I like to think about hunting down a 470 ohm resistor in my highly organized resistor storage facility. It didn't make much, if any, difference to the picture quality on my screen, but it still works and is now ready to be returned to Paul. Off camera, I serviced the tape deck and tested loading again. All is working well. There are some other modifications you can do on these, many of which you can find at Adam Wilson's blog I mentioned before. I hope you enjoyed watching me not fix this computer. Don't worry, there are some properly broken ones coming up soon. Stay tuned. Imagine explaining a tuner to the youth of today. Imagine having to tune in TikTok. Uh, bye!